Hi, Floss Tube. It's Kathy with the So and So's. Today is, I think it's September 18th, possibly, something like that. Anyway, I'm coming on today. I don't really have much to show you. It's going to be a very short video, but I do have several announcements that I want to make. And the first one is that Nancy has made a new video on her channel, which is So Cozy Stitching. It's S-E-W-C-O-Z-Y-S-T-I-T-C-H-I-N-G. And she is going to start recording on her own um, channel again because it's so hard for us to get together and people really love seeing her her things her finishes and her whips and her works in progress and all those things her quilts all the wonderful things she does so she's going to start recording her own videos she has one out yes just yesterday she put it out so you need to go over there and watch it and she is going to be recording probably monthly or whenever she has enough to show so that's exciting so go watch her it was so hard for us to get together being 70 miles apart it's like an all-day ordeal to get together and film a video so this will be fun I'll be able to watch her um, as well as her watching me so that'll be fun Another thing is, um, I told you about my eyes, and I've been having a real hard hard time with them. My right eye won't focus, and so when I stitch, my left eye gets overworked because it's trying to make up for my right eye. So I can only stitch for about an hour before both eyes are just shot, and I have to put it down. So um, I will be having surgery on my eye probably in November. Um, I was, when I see the retinologist, so after that, I'm not sure it's not scheduled or anything, but uh, that's what my eye doctor has told me. The other thing is, I've been hobbling around all summer. I have finally went to the doctor, my orthopedist, and I have a bone spur on my heel that is cutting into my Achilles tendon. And also, the shape of my heel bone is enlarged for whatever reason. It's just the way I was made. And it's also rubbing on my Achilles tendon, so it's making it very painful to walk. So I'm going to have to have surgery on my heel to remove. He has to remove the tendon from the bone, remove the bone spur, shave down the oversized bone that I have there, and then he's going to drill holes in the bone and suture the tendon back to the bone through the holes that he drills. So it's sort of like he's going to be cross-stitching on my heel bone to reattach my Achilles tendon. And that means that I'll be in a cast, non-weight bearing for six to eight weeks and then in a boot for another six to eight weeks and then I can start physical therapy to try and stretch it back out so for one thing my craft rooms upstairs and there it's a full story of fairly steep stairs so I'm not gonna even try to climb the stairs on a non weight bearing foot I'd probably fall off the crutches and break my neck so I can't be up here in my craft room for six to eight weeks, and I don't even know. Once I get the boot on, I can probably make it up here. But anyhow, it's going to be a while before um, I'll be able to get up here and do videos. Um, I am going to schedule the surgery probably around the week of the 22nd or 1st or whatever that is of October because I still have to go to Under the Garden Moon Retreat. Um, I leave on the 29th of September. It starts the 30th and goes through the 3rd, and that's in Provo, Utah, and I'm teaching a class on cross-stitch finishing. And then I come home for a week, and on the 11th, I leave for Ogden for Shepherd's Bush Open House, and then that's on Friday and Saturday, and then on Monday, the retreat starts at um, Park City. 
So I can't wait for that either. So the the foot surgery is scheduled for after that because I have to go to those two events. And once I have the surgery, I won't be able to drive either because it's my right foot. So I have to be able to drive to Utah to go to those two events. So that's kind of where I am. I'll show you what I have uh, finished stitching up to this point, and then I'll let you know what I plan on doing. I probably am going to take a suspended animation <laughs> hiatus until after the first of the year. Um, if I can get back up here in my craft room and get some things done, then it might be sooner than that, but I'm kind of counting probably after the first of the year. And then my husband is going to have both of his knees redone at the same time. We haven't scheduled that either, but it's probably going to be February or March. So um, I'll have to be back on my feet so I can take care of him because he'll be back off of his feet for sure. So let me show you what I did get done since our last, my last video. And that was the one I did with Nancy just prior to going to the um, Stitching on the River Retreat in Boise, which was very fun. Maggie's on Main um, was the shop putting that on. Um, we met at the Red Lion uh, Riverside in Boise, which was a great, a great venue. They did a, a great job for their first time. Um, we had Dirty Annie was the designer, and she had some great designs. We had um, Maggie's on Main brought their whole store practically, so we had lots of fabric and patterns and everything we needed to purchase, and we had a really good time. That was Nancy's first retreat, and she really enjoyed it. So um, that was the last time we visited, and so this is what I've done since then. Um, I have a couple pieces. This first one was stitched on 36 count vintage country mocha, no, 40 count, 40 count vintage country mocha. And I haven't been able to stitch on 40 count since. And that is Woodland Witch, a new fall release this year from With Thy Needle and Thread. And it's a little witch and she's in a glass cloche with mushrooms and snails. And here it is, it's finished and I laced it ready to fully finish but it is so cute. There's an owl and a little pumpkin face and little mushrooms and the tiny little snails and the falling leaves. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite designs of her so far, I think. I also ordered from Menards. She has the ordering information in the pattern. This is the finishing board. And look at its um, raw bark or just unfinished bark on the edges it even has moss on it on both sides which is very cool I am going to um, seal this I don't know that I'll stain it maybe a little a light stain maybe about this color and then this goes on it like so of course centered and straight and then I ordered the Lady Dot Creates. This is olive branch that matches the green um, that goes on around the edges. And then there's a bow at the top. See, she just lightly stained hers too. So the the picture, this is kind of too light. It just needs a little bit of stain on it. But I think that is going to be so cute. I'm actually leaving this apart to take it to show at the finishing class um, how you do a flat finish like this. And so I just have it all laced and I'm not going to put it together till I get to the class and show them how to do that. So that one's ready. After that, I stitched, I borrowed this from a friend. This is my little working copy here. It's kind of all beat up. But it's um, Stacy Nash, uh, As the Crow Flies, Pin Keep. 
And this is so cute. And thank you, Janice, for lending me the pattern because I loved stitching it. It was really fun to stitch. Um, I have a board here. If I can get the other stuff off. So this is As the Crow Flies Pin Keep. And there it is, all finished. This is on 36 count Country Vintage Mocha, I believe. No, you know what? It's on um, Legacy by PTP. 36 count Legacy by Picture This Plus. Whoops. And there it went. I just love the crow, the little quilt patterns, the acorns. The border is fun. It's not hard to do. And the house. I love the whole thing. It was all called for colors and it stitched up really quick. I really, really enjoyed it. So that was the other thing I got done. Then my eyes pretty much gave out on me. And last year, last fall, I was at um, the Shepherd's Bush, at Shepherd's Bush, and they had all their fall everything out. And um, someone had stitched up some Prairie Schooler Smalls on 10 count Ada or Clostern or whatever you want to call it from the Prairie Schooler. And then they had taken, I think, three or four coordinating fabrics, fall fabrics, and put borders. There were three borders, some giant rickrack, and then a ruffle all the way around the pillow and made these square pillows. They were about 10 inches square and, you know, thick, fat, really cute pillows. And these, um, here's the pattern I picked up to do. It's called Autumn Leaves. And I have done this crow, this pumpkin, and this owl. And I used the number 10 count fabric and uh, number three, ah, number three pearl cotton, which is the heaviest. And so this is like tapestry, practically, when you have it finished. It is so solid and so thick. So there's the pumpkin and the crow. I love this little house and the berries. The crow's my favorite. And then this little owl. So I'm going to make three pillows out of those. I need to find some cute fall fabric that will coordinate with them. But this I can stitch on. I can see this, and it doesn't bother my eyes so bad because the holes are so big, you don't have to focus real tiny to, to see it. So that was fun to do. I just need to make them into pillows. And then last year at the Under the Garden Moon Retreat, on the last day, um, Amy gave us a pattern that she designed and it's this one. It's a take-along stitcher's mat. And she gave us the pattern, the linen, or it's Ada. It's a 10-count Ada. A piece of velvet um, and the finishing supplies to make the stitcher's mat. Um, we picked our own colors for the design because... She wanted us to pick a fabric and then pick colors that went with the fabric. And this has cute little pockets. There's a couple pockets there, another pocket here. This is for you to put your threads on while you're stitching. And it's just really cute. Rick rack around the inside border and the binding. I picked some tilde fabrics. Um, this is going to be kind of a piece together mat the fabrics are it's a five and a half inch stack so it's a variety in these colors so the threads i picked were blues and reds and pinks and greens and i stitched mine like that and i put my initial up in this space at the top it just fit so i have that ready to finish into the stitcher's mat, which I need to do before I leave on the 29th. I need to get that done. 
but I thought that turned out really cute. And this is with number five pearl cotton. So it's the next size smaller than I did the Prairie Schoolers in, but it still has excellent coverage on 10 count. So that was fun. So I've got to get that done to take with me to the retreat. And other than that, that I've been doing crochet because I can do that without having to see something really small. And so I've been making table mate gifts for the two retreats I have coming up. Um, and I've been crocheting little things for that. And then I have done a little bit of embroidery, but I didn't bring it up here with me. So other than that, that's all I have to show you. So I think um, I'm done with my video, and I just want to say that I probably won't be back until after the first of the year. So I'll get myself healed up and my eyes working again so I can see what I'm doing and get back to all my making things and I hope everyone has a fantastic fall uh, happy Halloween happy Thanksgiving Merry Christmas Happy New Year <laughs> and I will be back after all of those holidays so enjoy your time and have happy stitching thanks to everyone who follows me and watches and comments and I appreciate all of you so much and I will see you next year so happy stitching, everyone. Bye-bye.